Hi, welcome to the Craft Channel. My name's Corinne Brad, and today I've got a cute project for your dog, or a cute project for your friends who are going to have their dog as their best man at the wedding, or maid of honour at the wedding. And it's a little bow tie, or for a female dog, you can wear it around the back of her neck. It's a it's not an adjustable collar, but it's a collar that you can size to the neck of your dog, which I'll show you in a minute. And it has a little clip on the bottom of it so that you can simply, oh, if you can get your rings off, pop the rings on there and your dog can carry the rings down the aisle for you for a wedding. Now I've made it so that it's not too fidgety for your dog because if your dog's anything like my dog, you put anything on him that's, that's unusual and he wants to get it off. So the bow tie sits quite flat, doesn't flap about. The hook at the bottom doesn't jangle about too much and you can adjust the collar to make it not a tight fit, but a reasonable fit so that it won't slide around. And also I'm going to put two press studs in the end so you've got extra security. So if one comes undone, you don't lose the wedding rings. I will put a pattern in the description below. And it's very simply, this is the pattern cut on the fold. You want to cut yourself two pieces of right size together fabric onto a layer of wadding. And what we're going to do is these centre parts will be the outer part of the bow. So I'm going to start just here on a section that will be the inner part. And I'm just going to run a straight stitch all the way around the edge and leave myself about a four centimetre turning gap back at the beginning. And probably what I should have said before I started stitching this is with the template that I'll provide, you need to draw around it onto the back of your, on the reverse of your fabric and then cut it out with your seam allowance so that you can use that pencil line that you've drawn as a stitch guide. And I've left myself a little turning gap. Now knowing me, I've probably left myself too small a little turning gap, but we shall find out in a minute. Take your pins out, just clip away your corners and cut into those internal angles. And I've sewn this onto a wadding layer just so that your bow has a bit of substance to it and should hold its shape you know, even with the most fidgety of dogs, it should hold its shape. And just before I turn it out, I am going to do my normal grab a bit of glue and fold over the edges of that gap because it's very slightly on the bias. And what I don't want to do is distort that fabric as I'm turning this right side out. I'm also just going to trim away that wadding a little bit. Before I fold back this side. So you don't need a lot of glue, you just need enough to keep it out of the way. And then Grab your end of your bow. So you separate the two layers of fabric and push that down. Chunky wooden knitting needles are always good for this kind of project. Thank you. 
and then use the point of your knitting needle to push out those corners. Oh, don't push out too far because then what you'll do is you'll just go straight through the corner with your knitting needle. But we'll ignore that for a minute. I'm just going to put my iron on before I forget. So here you have your bow tie shape. I'm just going to manipulate out those angles. And then we'll just give it a good press. And what you can do is you can, if you wish, just over sew that turning gap. So this is the centre of your bow. Let's have it this way round so the figures on my fabric are not decapitated. You need to bring one third of it up. And then I'm just going to run a short line of tacking stitching here to hold this in place. Unfold the other end and bring this back up again. On the other side, and again, just run a short line of tacking stitch to hold it in place. Oh. So you now have your stitched bow shape. Just double check that where you've tacked that, you've actually got the same amount of bow, which I haven't on here. So I'm just going to run that again. if you've ever watched any of my previous demonstrations, you know that Corinne doesn't measure. Corinne just looks at it by eye and hopes for the best. That's better. Yeah, so you've now got near enough the same amount of extension on the back there, on both sides. So that's the bow part. Now with the actual collar itself, what you want is a strip of fabric that is about five and a half centimetres wide. And I'm going to do this one is this is about 55 centimetres long. I've folded it in half right sides together lengthways. I've pinned it onto a narrow strip of wadding. And I'm going to start in the middle and just run down the sides and the bottom from the middle outwards. And let's leave ourselves about four centimetre turning gap.
So this is a project you can make quite easily from a fat quarter. You could probably get it out of a fat eighth, if I'm honest. It doesn't use a lot of fabric at all. And then, let's just fold that over so I know where my turning gap is. And again, just separate those two layers of fabric. Pop your knitting needle in there. It's at this point in the demonstration you think, where did I put my piping turner? Because that would make life a lot more easy. But you can still do it with a knitting needle. And the reason I start in the middle of the work and work out in both directions is so that you don't have quite so far to push the ends of your piping. And it also means that because your collars, your bow is going to be sewn to the middle of the fabric, you can e easily disguise the stitching on that turning gap when you sew it up. So let's just do this other end. And I can assure you, this is a real wake-up call to me as to why I normally use a piping turner. So we'll turn that out. Just press out your corners. And again, oh, let's just give that a quick iron to flatten it out. So there you have the collar that will go around your dog's neck. And because you've got that quilt wadding in it, it makes it quite a comfortable collar. So if you find the centre of that, and you lay your bow on the centre, and then what you want to do is first of all, tack the bow in place in the centre of your collar, right down the middle. And then also, if you lift up this first part of the bow, you want to sew about three, four centimetres across the back of the bow. And this is so that it lays flush with the collar while it's being worn and it doesn't flap about too much. So one side. And the other side. And then what you need to do is go through and cut off all those ends of thread, of which there are many. Well, you could just go through at the end of the project and do your snagging then, but they're annoying me. So you've got your bow, which the back of it will sit on the collar, and the front is flapping about a bit now, but that's because we've not put 
central band in there. So the central band is about 19 centimetres by 5 centimetres. And what I'm going to do is so that I don't get a visible line of stitching on either side of it, I'm just going to sew halfway down the long edge and fasten it off. Leave myself a turning gap in the centre of that long edge and continue. And then so we don't get that visible seam when it's turned out, if you just manipulate that fabric so that that seam that you've just stitched is in the centre and sew across the ends, when you turn it out, that seam will be at the back. Same with the other end. Just clip those corners off. Turn it out in the most cack handedly way possible and just push those corners out neatly. Obviously I have turned my iron off because I completely forgot I had one more bit of pressing to do. But hopefully there's enough residual heat in there just to flatten that out. And then this is where you will hang your clasp from. So whether you choose something like this, these are from Tierra Cast, and they are uh, like a lead-free pewter, but they are quite malleable. They will bend out enough for you to put a wedding ring on, squeeze in enough that you can uh, tighten it up so they don't fall off as your dog trots down the aisle. And you just want to push one end of that fabric into the ring. We don't want it to dangle too low, but I suppose, what, about three centimetres? Let's give it four centimetres. In fact, I've done it at the wrong end of the fabric. Because what I want to do is I want this, this line here, fold as it were, to be hidden behind the collar. So you need to make sure, if you've got a directional fabric, if you pop it on like that, when you bring this down to wrap the bow, your figures are the right way up. So we'll just hold that in place. And also, as you can see, I haven't bothered closing up that turning gap because that will be hidden. And then what you want to do is you place that behind there, give it a wrap, and then pull this fairly tightly around your collar, just so it gathers it up a little bit. You could probably do with being a tiny bit tighter. So even if you squeeze that collar in half and then wrap that nice and tightly so that your hanging loop, as it were, hangs down from the bottom. And then what you will need to do, and this is about the only hand stitching you'll need to do in this project, if you just pop a pin in that, I 
open it out and then if you over sew that gap there as you can see I've done can you see I've done yes you can see I've done it here just hand stitched the gap so that when it hangs down you don't see any visible stitching on the front of that bow apart from where you've overlapped your fabric and you haven't quite got it in line So there you have it. And the reason I've not given a measurement for your dog collar is it's one of those things, every dog's neck is different. If you wrap this around the neck and make a note of where the two pieces overlap, Now, I don't actually imagine my dog's neck is as big as mine. And then the simplest way to fix this is with my uh, trusty plier fix snap fasteners. So you take both layers of fabric, pierce between the layers of fabric all the way through, on one side and on the other side choose yourself some coordinating or nearly coordinating snap fasteners and you need two drawing pin types no you don't you need four drawing pin types you need two female parts and you need two oh, male parts and these are quite easily fixed in so decide which your top half is going to be pop a drawing pin through the hole and pop a female part onto it place it in the pliers and give it a good squeeze and what that does is that compresses the drawing pin. Actually, I can take these pins out now. It compresses the drawing pin into the hole of the male or the female part, and it makes a really strong snap fastener. So we put a male on the other side. So they snap together. and do the same on the other end of the collar. Now you can, of course, if you're making these as a small business and you don't know the size of dog that will be wearing your collar, you can, of course, just fit it with a buckle as you would normally. But with having the two fasteners here, it does mean it's got a little bit of extra, extra security on your dog's neck and there's there's less things to fidget the dog and there you go so it can either be worn for a best man dog on the front or it can be worn as a maid of honor dog on the back of her neck um, or you can just make it without the ring holder just to dress up your dog for Christmas or its birthday or and to be honest, you can have it for yourself. So I hope you like that idea. Very easy to make. Minimum of fabric, minimum of fuss. Please come back and see us again very, very soon because we've got lots of ideas. Sewing ideas, there's a whole mountain of them now. So if you uh, subscribe to us, you'll get a notification when, whenever we post a new video online. It's normally on a Thursday afternoon, but don't hold me to that because things might change. Keep safe. We'll see you again very, very soon. Bye. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.